Thank you, Marco. So my name is Gilles Francoise. I'm a postdoc uh, researcher at Simon Fraser University. And um, I'm not a visualization expert. I've come more from introduction design on uh, movement and sound. And I did my PhD at IRCAM with Frédéric de Villacroix. But I started using intra uh, machine learning really to create interaction using movement. And I started realizing that visualizing what's happening inside the model can be super important to communicate machine learning ideas to uh, musicians. So to talk a little bit about the background, I'm really interested in movement interaction design in moving, in, in, in music, uh, performing arts, and maybe gaming applications. So I think that Baptiste kind of presented uh, well this morning the questions uh, that we have in using machine learning for music performance, which are um, uh, kind of different than traditional machine learning. And usually what we want to do is to uh, use machine learning for um, really for user-centered design. So we're not applying a problem-solving approach, but more an iterative design approach where we give example and the system learns and then we iterate over designs. And um, what we're usually doing and what I'm going to focus on is uh, movement recognition and movement uh, mapping to sound. So to present the workflow, um, wrong link here, to present the workflow that we usually use, so the idea is that we start a user, for example a musician, a composer, wants to build a system where his movements control sound. So we start from the sound and we start from listening and from the experience of listening design some movements that we want to associate with this sound. And we use machine learning to learn a model of the mapping between the movement parameters and the sound parameters. So then the users can uh, perform new movements at the input of the system and continuously control the sound synthesis. So what's really interesting in what we're doing is that we're using very small amounts of data. So we have, usually we start from scratch and each user defines his own example. So we're like, it's like a dozen examples maximum. And the other interesting thing is that we're focusing on continuous interaction. So we want to go beyond this idea of, okay, I will do a circle and this will trigger a sound or I will do a triangle and it will do something else. So it's kind of try, try to go to something more continuous and more uh, expressive. And eventually what's happening, so we're interested in designing movement interaction. And in doing this, there is a very interesting uh, iterative design process because what we want to do is design for movement interaction. We want to build a system that responds to movement in some way. And when we do this, we eventually design movement for interaction. And there is always this interplay between um, so creating a first set of gestures and then we have a first system and most likely it doesn't work. So we need to reflect on our gesture design, maybe adjust the uh, um, model and iterate uh, over this. So there is this very interesting co-adaptation that is mentioned co-adaptation this morning, but the machine is um, learning from the user and the user learns how to uh, deal with machine learning and eventually iterate on his uh, design. So what I want to talk about is how can we use visualization to support this uh, design process with uh, machine learning. So um, I'm going to repeat myself a little bit here, but the basic steps of interaction design is first to create a training examples, then we'll select a set of parameters, so create a configuration, and use this to uh, learn a machine learning model. And finally, uh, we can provide new input and get information on the results of the prediction. So the feedback that we can get in this design loop is when we create the training examples, we can maybe visualize uh, the training data. And then we'll have results at the end. So maybe we can have some classification score, maybe we can do a new gesture and have uh, sound in real time uh, according to the model that we learned. So 
what's happening is that users are eventually building a mental model of the so machine learning model from just input-output relationships. And it's really a black box, and it's not always easy to understand why my model is working, why that gesture recognition works or doesn't work, and how to improve it. So what I want to uh, focus on is visualizing directly what's happening inside the model to kind of expose to the user how the model works, how does it predict a class for a gesture, how does it map to sound and what's happening inside. And this also opens possibilities to uh, directly manipulate. So if we can visualize what's happening inside the model, maybe we can also uh, manipulate directly the model. So there, there is here a new potential for user interaction with trained machine learning model. And there, have, there has been some work on using visual, interactive visualization to uh, tune machine learning models. But they usually focus either on the training data or on the results and not that much in user-centered machine learning on the models themselves. So, um, just to give an example of this, I, I created, um, I made a prototype for visualization of hidden Markov models for just a recognition and mapping to sound and you will have the opportunity to see it if you stay at Kai the next days in interactivity. So, the system is based on a visualization of the Gaussian components of the hidden Markov model. So, I'm going to show uh, a video of this. So, I could show you a, a live demo, but I'm afraid that it will fail if I do it at live. So, oops. <laughs> so, in the prototype, the gestures are entered using the mouse. But we can use different types of sensors, but using the mouse position is very clear. So I'm going to start by drawing a gesture and then see how the HMM fits this gesture. So you just start, record a gesture, and you see where your states are. So you can change the number of states, and you will see that it changes the temporal uh, precision of the model. Then you can regularize, so you can decide to make the model more general or not. So you directly understand how your parameters are acting on what you're doing. Then you can add other examples and see how it changes your model and where your states are positioning given your examples. And this is very interesting because you can see, for example, if, if the goal is to follow the gesture in time, so to have the temporal progression, you can see that the number of states will really change how the model is uh, making the prediction. And so if you want to change, you can put it in another class and see how, how assigning different labels, you will have two different classes and you can uh, perform recognition like this. And I'm going to move a little bit further here. So we can do exactly the same for regression. So this is another example for regression where I'm mapping between 2D gestures to 2D gestures. So I recorded two trajectories at the output and I'm recording uh, one other trajectory at the input. So I'm giving, associating two examples at the input and see how the model is mapping this input to this output. So what's really interesting after that is to try to give new examples of the input. For example, something that would be in between my two examples and see if my model has uh, two Gaussian per states, or if it is like this, the results will be different. So we can really evaluate with the configuration of the states if the model will be able to interpolate between the examples of the training set, if it's able to go beyond the examples that we gave in the training set. And the final possibility is the possibility to directly edit the model. So here you just state the Gaussian states and you move them around so when you replay your input, your output is here completely on the right. 
So what's really interesting is that you can kind of craft a model from examples and then you can act directly on the machine learning model itself to uh, uh, modify it. And I think this is very interesting for uh, interaction design in music and in art in general because it, it really opens possibility for new types of interaction where one part will be, okay, I define my own gestures by moving and then I can add another process that will act and, and, and tweak my model uh, in different ways. So what I wanted to uh, discuss today is yeah, really this idea of visualizing inside models and I have a few maybe more general questions about this and the first would be what actually do we want to visualize in, in machine learning and what kind of visualization can be generic for example for each classifier we can have real-time visualization of likelihoods of the different classes and, and what other visualizations are really specific so in this case hidden Markov models, Gaussian mixture models we have visualization of the states and here it's very nice because it's 2D, it's positional, so we understand what's happening. If we have 12 dimensions, this visualization completely fails, obviously. So we need to find other, other ways to visualize. Another uh, question is the notion of affordances of different models, and I think looking at what's happening inside a model can be very interesting for the users that want to design interaction because um, the model behaves in different ways, it makes prediction in different ways, so they afford different types of uh, actions or interactions. And finally, another question that uh, interests me is this idea of co-adaptation and eventually how using machine learning and how using visualization of machine learning can um, tell us something about ourselves, can tell us something about how we make movements, etc. And yes, yeah, as far as questions that I'm really interested in this uh, aspect of visualization for interaction design. Thank you.